Hi and welcome to Edge of Plays, back to the Tactics Board in this European Championship Special. The information in these uh, videos has been mainly sourced from the World Soccer Magazine, which has got a great European Championships uh, special in there, uh, BBC Sport and various other media outlets as well. In each video, we try to look at the qualifying records, the tactical approaches, the strengths and weaknesses. In today's video, we're going to look at Group C, featuring Austria, the Netherlands, North Macedonia and Ukraine. Austria, first of all. They came second in qualifying, you'll see there, winning six of the ten games, coming second to Poland. In terms of tactical approach, usually 4-2-3-1, generally possession-based, and they press well in qualifying. The stats showing they were one of the best pressing sides for ball recoveries in the whole of qualification. Under the overly a cautious approach, Franco Foda, of Franco Foda, the team have rarely showed what they are capable of. That's Fritz Newman, not a big fan of Franco Foda, the coach. Um, it does seem that the general feeling is that Foda's very, very cautious and that the fans are not totally behind that. In terms of the pros, well, they're very well organised and there are quite low expectations of them. In fact, on that low expectations thing, looking into the past for Austria, they've, I think I might mention it now actually, yeah, poor record in recent tournaments, played nine and won none of those games. And that's across, I think, three tournaments. So it's been a good while since they've had a win. Maybe that's why the coaches go more cautious, but uh, that you, you'd get the feeling that's maybe why they're not winning at this level. And they do seem to lack a creative spark as well. Not lots of goals flowing in that team. I would say group stage is the pros pro most likely expectation they get knocked out. But, uh, you know, like all the teams, they'll be hoping to make the round of 16. Here's the Austrian squad. Uh, David Alaba, uh, by Munich, um, is a, he's a world-class player. But from reading on it, it looks like he sometimes gets played in midfield so they can play another player at left back. That's Ulmer. So, yeah, you have that situation of he's the star player but is he playing in his best position or are they having to use him in another position where it makes him you know, not absolutely at the top of his game? In terms of other star quality, I've actually highlighted Arnautovic. You know, fans from the Premier League will remember him. He's now playing in China, so not really heard much about him, but he is a star kind of player. It's whether he's going to be, if they're on the back foot, is he going to be working his socks off for the team? But he has got bits of magic in him, so you know, he could be an interesting player in the tournament. The Netherlands then, they finished second to Germany in qualifying, like to use the, the standard 4-3-3 and they sometimes go to like a 5-3-2 or 3-5-2 uh, when they're playing stronger sides. The wingers often drop deep in the 4-3-3 and their strike has given a lot more freedom not having to come back and defend. Frank de Boer said, I would say a place in the semi-finals would be a good result for us. He did say he wants to go on and win it, but I think it gives you an idea of their expectations and where they're up to in their process at the moment. The rebuilding uh, after the disappointment of, of not qualifi qualifying for other tournaments recently, but it does seem like they're on the up again. There are lower expectations of them, therefore, and that can be a, a good thing for a side that can kind of sneak in under the radar. And they've got some home games to play as well, which could be an advantage. In terms of the coach, Frank de Boer, his, his track record recently being sacked from his last few jobs, is that going to be a problem for them? You do wonder. I don't think he's fully won people around over there yet. And Van Dijk not being available, obviously a big miss for them there. And they're not, they've not got lots of strength in depth uh, to replace him. Here's the Netherlands squad then. I've highlighted Frankie de Jong at Barcelona. If he's on the ball and getting the getting the team passing and moving, then he's world class, world class at that. Memphis at Depay up front as well. He's the main goal scorer and is an attacking threat, good on set pieces. But it's not it's not the same level of strength of Dutch teams of old. I think you can see that. But if some of these young players take their chance, then maybe they are on an upward uh, trajectory as well. So a real dark horse here, North Macedonia. Looking at qualifying, they came through na uh, the Nations League. Um, and came top of that group and then beat Kosovo and Georgia in playoffs to, to qualify for the first ever tournament. They used to play a 4-2-3-1 or a very cautious 3-5-2. So by that, the wing-backs being more defensive than, than offensive. Look to move the ball quickly, deliver balls into the box. The coach, 
Igor says, my philosophy is that when a young player deserves the chance to play and he has the quality, I will give him the opportunity. It's not important if the player is young or old. And that's referencing the fact they brought in lots of players from their under-21s into the squad uh, in recent, recent times. Pro as well, low expectations, probably the biggest underdogs in the tournament. Anything they get would be a bonus. And it's a historical moment for their nation. First ever time at an international tournament. So anything they get will be the best they've ever done. Downsides, they are lacking overall star quality. And of course, like I've just referred to, they are inexperienced at this level. So you'd think group stage would be the expectations and trying to get a point or trying to even, even get a win would be the big thing for them. Here's the squad. I've highlighted a couple. Elmas from, from Napoli is a creative player. And Pandev, I think 30... Is he 36, even 37? Now, plays for Genoa, is their highest appearances and most goals scored and the, the team captain as well. On to Ukraine then. So they came top of their qualifying group, notably ahead of Portugal. Tend to play 4-3-3 or a 4-1-4-1. Uh, it seems to be about triangle shapes in the central midfield. If they're defensive, having two deeper and one more advanced. And if they're uh, the other way around and gone on the attack, it's one deeper and two pushing on. Most passes are short or medium in length. Uh, they, they tend to play this short passing game, little triangles linking up. Shevchenko, obviously a famous player, now the, the head coach. I do not look at the result, he says. The most important thing for me is the quality of the game, its content, whether the players fulfill the tasks or not. And pros for the team, well, it's a team on the up, growing in belief, um, looking at some of their results, looking at the way they have changed their system of, of play, a bit more progressive, a bit more attacking. feels like they're on the up, and it's quite a balanced side. They seem to know who's in the squad quite clearly and, and who plays where. The downside is the defence strong enough versus stronger sides, and do they have enough of a goal threat as well would be another question. Last 16, you'd say something they'd be targeting. Potentially could be an interesting one to go even further, maybe get to the quarterfinals. But yeah, uh, Ukraine should be interesting to watch. The, the things I'm reading are telling me that they're on the up and they're a, a side that has some potential. But you hear that sometimes and it doesn't come to fruition when it actually comes to tournaments. So be interested to see that. Here's their squad. I've highlighted Yamalenko from West Ham, Zinchenko of Man City, and Yeremchuk as well, plays in Belgium. Uh, they're like singled out as being players that are very important for the side. So that's Group C, Austria, the Netherlands, North Macedonia and Ukraine. You'd have to have Netherlands as favourites, I think, but it's going to be interesting then. You know, Ukraine probably second place, but Austria will think that'll be their position. And North Macedonia, I suppose everyone thinks they have to beat them. They have to get the three points against them and that could end up working out for them to grab a point here and there. But let us know how you think this group will play out. Who do you think will win? Who do you think will qualify? Uh, is anyone going to mess up in this group? Will North Macedonia take anything from it? Let us know and I hope to see you when we look at Group D.